If you ever felt the necessity of grouping all the times that you have mentioned someone in your notion, or even find a way to accumulate information about a task that you are going to tackle before you actually start doing the task, then this video is going to be very helpful for you. In this video, we are going to be covering Notion backlinks. And by the end of the video, I'm going to show you four very useful ways that I myself use to get the most out of this feature. If you're new here, my name is Daniel, former engineer now running an online course creation agency and also the founder of the Notion Academy, where we help people get the most out of Notion. So first of all, what are backlinks? So for this, I'm going to be using this representation. First, I'm going to explain what will happen without backlinks and then explain what happened with backlinks. So for this, let me draw two different pages. And then we will see the after. Okay, so before, if we were in page A and we will mention page B, like so, this we will be creating one link from A to B. But then, if we are in B, we will have no information that A is pointing to B. But now, what happens in this situation when we are in A and we mention B? This is after Notion Backlinks has been introduced. So we will be creating the same link as before. But at the same time, we'll, we will be also creating an automatic link from B to A. Because here within B, we will find a new part of the page with all the backlinks. So therefore, if we are in B, we will be able to know that A is pointing to B. So now let's see how we can create these backlinks. And then in the end, how can we make the most out of them? So for this, let's go to Notion and let's open a new page. Okay, so there is three ways to create backlinks. The first one is going to be by using the double brackets or the add sign. Let's see an example. First, I'm going to press the two brackets. So here I can find whatever page I want to link it to. Let's see to my YouTube channels page or oh, part-time YouTuber Academy. This is a course that I'm taking on YouTube. So now this is linking this page that is let's say page A, is linking to part-time YouTuber Academy. So if I click here, I will see that this brings me back to page A. So I hit here, I go back, okay? I can create it the same way using the add sign. And it will be the same. So you may be asking, what is the difference? The only difference is that by using the add sign, I can also mention people and I can also input dates. But if I am using the brackets, I cannot do any of those. But for backlinks, they behave exactly the same. Now, the other option is going to be using the plus sign. So how does this work? If we hit the plus sign, and write the name of the page that we want to link it to. Here you can see that by default, this option is highlighted because this is going to allow me to create a new sub page within the page that I'm in. And I have also this option, which is to create a new page in any other part of my workspace. But I also have the possibility to link it to the part-time YouTuber Academy page. So, the difference between using the plus sign and using this method above is that by default, by using the plus sign, the first option is going to be creating a new sub page. And by default, by using this method above, the first option is going to be to link to an existing page. But in the end, these three ways can all create backlinks. Now let's put an example when we are creating a page within this page. So you see, just by hitting enter, I will create a page that is within page A. You see here in the breadcrumbs, page A and page within page A. And also, we can select where this page is going to be located. By hitting here, 
we can select we want to add it in my backlog page so this is going to be linking to a new page that has been added to my backlog page so now one thing to note is that if we go to the backlink here the only thing that we will be looking at will be the page name so for example if we put some text near here if we go to the backlink we will not be seeing this text so what we see here is the name of the page in which the backlink is located so okay enough with the theory this is very interesting but how can we use this let me give you four use cases in which i personally use backlinks the first use case is going to be for research here in my right hand side i have a database in which i am aggregating all the knowledge from all these different topics and one of them is building in public and here on the left hand side i have these notes from this youtube course that i'm taking so this is about YouTube, so it will be very easy for me to come here and link this database with my YouTube channels here, because all of this is going to be about YouTube. But if I'm taking this course, maybe Ali Abdal is going to mention something about building in public. So it will be a little bit overkill to link this page to the building in public page because just one tiny part of here is related to building in public so we can create a backlink for this and that's it now whenever we are ready to dive into building in public we will just go to this page and we will see that I have mentioned building in public in two times in the literature notes from another online course that I did and in part-time YouTuber Academy. So in this way, we will not have to start from scratch our research about building in public. We will already have some context and some starting points. Okay, our second use case is going to be related to tasks. So let's say again that I'm taking this course and in here I'm getting a lot of new video ideas that I'm typing here. But as the course is going very fast, I don't have time to process them and put them inside of my database. So for me to don't forget to do this in the future, I will create from here a new task. And for that, as I'm creating a new page, so I'm not linking to an existing page, I'm going to be using the plus sign and say to myself, process these video ideas. And I'm going to be creating a new page in my tasks database and that's it I can even come here with command open it as a new page and even assign a date for this page for this new task sorry it does I'm gonna do it tomorrow and close it and continue with my course and then tomorrow I will be reminded because of the system that, uh, that we can build in Notion that I have to process these video ideas and I can continue taking notes from the course. Another way that we can use this, let's say that we have a task created for updating our landing page for our website. And we are taking again a course that is not related entirely about landing pages, but there is one idea that you can apply to your landing page. So we have the task here already ready to receive inputs from other sources and here I have that courses convert higher when you show what's inside. So I'm going to be creating a backlink to my landing page task. So whenever I start organizing my new landing page, I'm going to be able to take from here all the ideas that I have gathered through my natural content consumption. So the next use case is going to be to group things related to certain people. So in my case, I have a database in which I store people. So this is a database with related people from my life. So let's say that when I'm writing my morning pages, let's say that I dreamt of my girlfriend, which is Dasha. So I will mention her. And in fact, I'm going to be mentioning her page within my people's database. So here, this is the people's database. 
So I'm gonna mention her. So now if we go to Dasha's page, here I can see all the times that I have mentioned this person. So this is a very good way to track all the history that we have with this person in particular. But what happens if this person is not part of our people's database? We can of course use the plus sign and create a new entry. But let's turn it up a notch and let's differentiate between men and women because we want that men have the men emoji and women have the woman emoji. So for this, let's go to the people's database and create two different templates. One for men and we will use a men emoji, here we have, and another one for a woman, sorry, this was not a man. Now if we are in our daily log, writing about a new person that we just met, let's say his name is Tom, but Tom is not part of my people's database. So I'm going to use the plus sign Tom and create a new page in and here I'm able to look for that template that I created within the people's database. So because Tom is a man, here I have the men template and you see that the emoji automatically is updated to the one that I said before. Now the next and final use case for backlinks is going to be for using bookmarks. What do I mean by this? Let's say that we are reading a very long article. Let's say Musing the Age of Abundance by Debbie Perel, one of my favorite articles, by the way, which is crazy long, okay? So let's say that we stop reading here and maybe tomorrow we wanna come back to this point, but maybe tomorrow we will not exactly remember where we left off. So we will be rereading all the parts to see what sounds familiar, what doesn't, and then try to guess where we stopped. But we can use backlinks for this. How? I have a database that is called a master tag database. And I am going to create a new entry that is going to be called continue from here. So now, if I go back to this article and I left it here, I can mention my continue from here page. So, okay, if this just happened with one article, it's very easy because you remember that you were reading that article, but this becomes very handy when you are reading several articles at the same time and maybe you even remember that you started reading some. So the best way to remember what you were reading and what you left unfinished will be to come to this page to see all the things that you were reading and you left. So here we will go back to the exact point that you left it. So I hope that this video gave you some ideas on how to use backlinks in Notion. I know that this feature is not something new because other tools such as ROM or Obsidian already have this backlinking feature and even much more advanced than in Notion. But that is the exact reason why I think this feature is going to be receiving a lot of love from Notion because they are trying to compete with those other alternatives. So it's a feature that is very worthwhile to start using because I'm sure that it's going to get greatly improved. Now the only real problem that I see with this feature right now is that it's very slow to load. If we have a lot of data in our databases, the search feature in Notion is still quite slow. So maybe it will stop you from the flow of writing. Other than that, I think it's quite useful. So that is it for this video, guys. Hasta la próxima.